Well, now it is time for our top five segment, man. And this week, it is going to be all about the indie films. We are indie filmmakers currently, so, you know, we got to support other indie films. And uh, these films are freaking phenomenal. They they touch on certain points that, you know, coming of age type things or, you know, just <laughs> hardcore drugs or just... <laughs> Certain subject matters that you feel like aren't publicized and mainstream to talk about enough, these films do. So it's always a beautiful conversation. I want to start off with my number five goes to mid nineties. This is a A twenty four film. It was directed by Jonah Hill. It was his directorial debut, and I think this film is beautiful because you it's based around a preteen male guy, and he is just trying to figure out his life um so you know as a preteen does he's trying out different stuff he tries out skateboarding and he founds that he likes skateboarding but then he founds this goes to the skate park and finds this older group of kids not much older but just a little bit enough to where he can idolize them and then you know he feels like he finds his people i feel like that was the overall message in this film finding your people and it takes time and you have to try things even when you don't feel comfortable because stepping out of that comfort zone actually helps you become the person who you are absolutely um but mid 90s is a beautiful film all shot on film and um yeah i loved every single second of it and uh actually might watch it again here soon but yeah number five for me is mid 90s nice nice okay my number five is also a coming of age story but not the way that you would think it's also about a legendary all-girl rock band that ends up spawning a whole lot of other people uh if you're not familiar i'm talking about the runaways which I just came across, it just happened to pop up on my radar when I was trying to find something to watch. I, I, I try to find these like little hidden gems and this one kind of popped up and I'll be honest with you, I almost didn't watch it because it stars Kristen Stewart and I'm not a huge Kristen Stewart fan. I hate to say that. I'm not trying to be mean. Don't come at me with the hate, but I'm just not, I'm not really a fan of, uh, but I loved her in this movie. I thought she was fantastic. So this is the story of the Runaways is the name of the band. And this is the story of Cherry Curry and Joan Jett and how they came together and formed the Runaways. And then how eventually jealousy and drug use and all kinds of stuff ended up breaking that band apart. Um, And obviously Joan Jett went on to huge fame on her own and Lita Ford. If you guys don't know, Lita Ford was a member of the Runaways who went on to become a member of the Bengals. And like, so, I mean, this this thing, and it's loaded with people, not just Kristen Stewart and Dakota Fanning, but Michael Shannon was in this. Um, uh, Riley Keough was in this. Tatum O'Neill, Brett Cullen. Like, it's a huge cast. Um, and it's amazing. But um, it really dives deep into, because I don't know if a lot of people know, but Cherry Curry was like 15 years old. And the manager that brought them together was like sleazy. He hired her because he basically wanted to get in her pants, 15 years old, um, and put this all girl and he got them the record deal and they, and, but when they got the record deal, when they were signed with the label and when they were touring and she, Cherry got on drugs and alcohol and got into trouble, fame got to her and it started causing friction. It also hints at, which I thought was very into a potential relationship between Joan Jett and Cherry. That mm. it, and a lot of people say that that is indeed true. Um, I don't know if it is or isn't. I feel like if it wasn't true, it would have been taken out of the film because Joan Jett herself was on set every day. She was a consultant on the film, which is why maybe I like Kristen Stewart's performance because she was playing Joan Jett and Joan Jett was there to tell her how to play Joan Jett. <laughs> so, I mean, like, it's a legit performance because Joan was right there going, no, bitch, that ain't me. You got to do that one again, kind of a, you know, because if you know Joan Jett, Joan's going to tell you what she thinks. Um, so, anyway, my number five, The Runaways, if you ever get a chance, it's, it's a great story about how they all become who they become and the disbandment of that band and where they all end up. Uh, it's a really, really really good movie the runaways nice man nice number four for me is honestly one of my favorite films of all time so i wanted to throw this in there and it's a very coming of age story as well it's set in the 70s came out in the 90s and i'm talking about dazed and confused uh, man yes. oh man this one completely took a lot of the cast members and completely 
starstruck them. I mean, you have young Ben Affleck, you have Matthew McConaughey's first ever role, first ever thing he's ever said on set or on screen, I should say, yep. is all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah. So, and I mean, you have a, so many others, man. It's great. It's a great film. It's great, you know, it's a great stoner flick. I'm not even going to lie to you, but it's just, it puts me back in being high school and you know not worrying about what comes next and just focusing on the now enjoying the people that you're with and it's just it's a beautiful coming of age story because life is was so free when you didn't have any care in the world that's for sure no responsibilities just having fun getting into trouble and good trouble but you know just being a kid yeah all it's about man i uh, so i love that film i I watch this one a lot. I'm not even going to lie to you. I've, I've watched that one a lot. So my number four for me is Dazed and Confused. I love that, bro, and I love that explanation because, right, when you're a kid, you want nothing more than to be an adult, and when you're an adult, you realize, damn, being a kid was much better. <laughs> like, so great. Living the <laughs> life so as great. a kid was so much better. Why did I fucking want to be an adult? Uh, and you're right. That film epitomizes that. It's just like a let loose, have fun, be a kid kind of a lifestyle. I love that. I love that. Uh, my number four. Again, another one that I just came across, but I was really interested to see it because none other than Captain America himself directed it. It was his directorial debut, and I was real curious to see what kind of a director is Chris Evans. Um, this one's called Before We Go, and it's a simple little... I can't call it a rom-com. I can't call it a romance movie or a love story movie because it's, it's really not. Um, his co-star is Alice Eve, and it's basically about... Chris Evans's character, who is he plays the, the trumpet and he's kind of like thing, and he's in this the the subway, and uh, he's about to go to his ex's his best friend's wedding where his ex is going to be, and the ex shot him down when he proposed, and he still thinks there's a shot, he still thinks the proposal just went wrong or maybe he didn't do so, and he's like I still got a shot. And then he sees this woman who's trying to catch the train because she's got to get to Boston and she drops her phone and she misses the train and she's all upset and then somebody steals her purse and he picks up the busted phone, tries to give it back to her or whatever. Then he says, I'll pay for a cab to get you to Boston, uh, you know, but then his credit card is declined and then his other credit card is uh, over the limit and he can't. And then he said, well, let me get you a hotel room. And she's like, I can't, I have to be at Boston. Okay, well, let me see if I can get a car to get you. So they basically end up hanging out the whole night in New York together and they kind of reveal each other's lives to each other and they kind of fall in love with each other and um but not uh and he slowly learns that her story is she is desperate to get to boston because her husband cheated on her but he he broke it off and then she found out that he was gonna rehook up with his mistress so she wrote him a big ass nasty letter about all that but then he decided not to hook up with the mistress. And now she doesn't want him to see the letter because she's hoping to save the marriage. And so he finds out about that. And she finds out about the disaster with the proposal and everything. And basically they don't ever get to go to Boston. And they end up standing the whole night. And it's cute. They do. They go into little restaurants. They end up at a party where they pretend to be the band. And they sing and, and he plays. And, and But then the real band comes and they get the fuck out of there. Kind of a, it's just a really fun, what would you do if you're spending the whole night in New York together and you don't really know each other kind of a thing. But she ends up going to the best friend's wedding with him and pretending to be his girlfriend in front of his ex. And then... He finds out that she – he runs out when he sees her because he gets nervous. But she finds out that his ex is pregnant and that it's really over. There's no shot. So she convinces him to go back in and talk to the ex and say, you got to go resolve that because it's over. It, you're, it's never happening. You got to – she's moved on kind of a thing. And, um, and he does the very nice thing with her about, well, if your husband does see the letter, if, you don't, if you're not able to get to it or whatever, and he doesn't understand why you wrote it, then that's over. You should move on. And if he does understand, then good. You try to fix it. And that's basically it. And then he writes her a little message on the back of a train ticket. She finally gets on the train the next day or whatever, and you, they share one more little kiss. But um, 
I just, I loved it. I thought it was a really interesting, the, the hijinks that they get into throughout the night. If you've ever been in New York City in the middle of the night, you know, you can get into all kinds of trouble and all different kinds of places and everything. But I, I thought it was a really well done from a filmmaker aspect by Chris Evans. For a directorial debut, I thought he did a really good job. Uh, it paces well. The, the shots are, are great. Um, he's a good director, so I hope we see more of his directing in the future. Uh, my number four, Before We Go. Nice, man. Nice. Um, my number three goes to Desperation Road, and we actually had the director and writer of this film on our show, Nadine Crocker, who we actually just had back on everything's okay to talk about suicide prevention but this film specifically is phenomenal it is literally one of my favorite indie films that i've ever seen like it's so freaking good it's just about a mom just trying to run away from an abusive husband who gets into a little bit of trouble just defending herself but that in turn makes her go on the run elude the police i don't want to give too much away but it is freaking phenomenal it's got mel gibson in it everybody's acting is so freaking unique and beautiful and it's it's a darker story that there's light at the tunnel no matter what situation you're in and you know it's a journey life is a journey sometimes you're going to be in very shitty situations and you will come out of it even though it doesn't seem like it sometimes but you will come out of it and that's what this film is it's so freaking good you guys can rent this right now on amazon yeah so be sure to do that because like i said it's one of the best indie films that i've ever seen yeah desperation road Oh, without doubt. And it's got Garrett Hedlund in it, if you guys are Garrett Hedlund fans. And it's got our friend Ella Thomas in it. Uh, so many great people in the cast. But um, I really liked this one because it's got a unique twist to it. You find something out, and we're not going to spoil it to you because the, 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 the twist is like an oh shit moment. But it's got a unique little twist in it that you go, oh shit. And you realize how the whole story plays out, and it's just brilliant. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I think I think, great pick, great pick. My number three... It's also on Amazon. You can rent it and do a Nadine Crocker double feature because my number three is her other independent film, which is also phenomenal and really intense, um, Continue. And this one is her semi-autobiographical film about suicide. Um, if you guys don't know, Nadine did try to take her own life numerous times in the past and struggled with addiction, uh, addiction and mental health problems and cutting and um, overcame all of that to now do the life that she's doing and, and, and her purpose of trying to help others through it. But this film takes a really stark look at not just suicide, but mental health and, and, and how people cope with and and sometimes not cope with mental health and how it addresses how it needs to be talked about more it's a very intense film i will warn you all that the first five minutes is really hard to get through um because of the subject matter but once you do you see the story and the importance of this film or uh it's just it's an amazing amazing film um nadine is a stellar human being there's a reason why we both have her on the list at at, at the end and and love these movies she's she's just she's a phenomenal filmmaker but she's an even more phenomenal human being and we love her to death um so yeah hook yourself up get on amazon do a double feature continue at desperation road boom you're good to go that's our number threes that's right, man. That's right. Number two for me, speaking of Heath Ledger earlier in the show, this film is wild. It is titled Candy, and it is an Australian indie film. Um, he liked to go back over to his home country and do those. And <laughs> this film is wild. It has a lot to do with codependency and codependency with drugs. Mm. And it's basically about a couple who are heroin addicts and just try to get by every single day getting their fix and continuing moving forward and then realizing that they are the girl realizes that she needs to separate from him so that she can get her life together and so i feel like the overall theme of this film is to just examine your life every now and then examine the people in your life examine your circle is there anyone that brings you down is there people around you that don't make you feel good because everyone around you that you have around you mentors friends anything like that they should make you feel 
good. You Absolutely. should never feel like you need to do something like use drugs or do something bad. Um, and I think that's what this film really brought out. And, you know, sometimes you don't even realize you're caught up in the mess. But then when you separate yourself from that person, you're like, wow, they are going through their own thing. And I was going through my thing. And we just found something that made us feel good in the time. Um, but to be able to overcome all of that darkness and to come out on the other side, I feel like is so important. It's a hard film to watch. I'm not even going to lie. It's really dark, obviously. Um, but the acting is phenomenal. Cinematography is phenomenal. And um, it really it's a beautiful film. So number two for me, Candy. And the irony of the tragic ending to his life <laughs> would be, I mean, you hear that storyline and you hear what it's about and he tragically did not come out of it on the other side. He did not get away from it. it oh, yeah, yeah, that's hard. That's hard. Um, my number two, similar, Short Term 12. This one was uh, with Brie Larson and Caitlin Deaver and Rami Malek and just a, another phenomenal cast. And it's a young Brie Larson and a young Caitlin Deaver. Um. Brie is, she's basically like a 20 year old and she's had a really fucked up life and going through a lot of shit. And so now she is a counselor at this residential uh, home where you're deposited involuntarily uh, to try to get treatment um, for whatever you're kind of going through. And she's about to get married. She's like got her life going, but she's still dealing with some stuff. Um, she's about to get married, make big life changes and all that. And then Caitlin Deaver's character comes in who's really fucked up and she comes in and Brie Larson's character sees herself in the child and it's like uh, oh oh this is bringing up all kinds of things for me kind of a and it just goes it dives deep into is she really overall her stuff is she ready for this marriage is she ready for these life changes is she kind of a thing and and they they really do this phenomenal job of blending these two characters and working these two characters together to figure life out um it's a really well done film that takes a really stark look at people coming from fucked up lives and different situations that get them into those spots and how do you deal with it and sometimes you don't and then you have to realize you haven't and and that you've still got work to do kind of and and that's what this film really is it really paints a picture on that and um yeah i'd highly recommend if you guys get a chance to check it out it's a really good one one of my favorite brie larson performances uh ever she she's phenomenal in this one and obviously i mean caitlin deaver what is she not good in i mean she's awesome so uh yeah short term 12 my number two mm, yeah good one good one my number one goes to Garden State. Zach Braff directed this. Oof. If you guys know him from Scrub, he also wrote it. He also starred in it. And then we also had freaking the one, the only, where is she? I know your name. You're right there. <laughs> You're right there. <laughs> Princess Leia, or not Princess Leia, Padme. Where are you? Why are you not listening? Natalie Portman? Natalie Portman. There we go. Yes. So this film is a big film that revolves around mental health. Um, this is basically a film about feeling like they can't do things without medication. So it kind of it's not as far as candy, but they also feel like they're not able to be normal human beings without medication. Um, so you go through a lot of the process of these people who have really bad anxiety, really bad depression, just wanting to feel okay. And the way they were told to feel okay was through medication, but then they also feel numb and they feel, you know, like they're not themselves anymore. So you're going through this whole process of people just finding themselves again. And especially two people who are going through the same process, finding themselves together um, so that they're able to feel comfortable in their own skin around each other. It's a, honestly a beautiful film. And um, I don't think, I feel like not a lot of people talk about this. No, film. they don't. So, uh, I mean, medication can be good, but medication can be bad because medication, it's his own journey. You're not going to find the right thing the first time, 90% of the time. So that's the thing. It's a process. You have to continue figuring out how your brain works, how your body works, how things make you feel. So that's really a, a a great example of what this film is. So yeah, number one for me, 
Garden State. There you go. I love it. I love it. We've got a little theme going in these films. I know. Not even. I I didn't even even realize. Nope. Nope. But I love it. Um, My number one should come as no surprise to any of our listeners that have been with us the whole time. (laughs) I I mentioned this film more times than I can say uh, because I'm that big of a fan of it. My number one uh, indie film of all time is Me and Earl and the Dying Girl. Um. I just I love this movie. I I cannot stress enough how much I love this movie. I don't know is it is it the characters? Okay, so it's a brilliant cast. You got Thomas Mann who plays Greg who's me, and then you got RJ Kyler who plays Earl and Olivia Cook who plays Rachel. But you've also got Hugh Jackman, you've got John Bernthal. It's it's just a freaking amazing cast. Jackman plays himself. Um and and John Bernthal, as he always does, like the scene he's in just steals the whole movie. He's like the principal and he's like giving him weed. And like, it, it's just a crazy ass. He, his character is brilliant. But what I love about this, the story is basically these two kids are very socially awkward. They don't, they don't hang out. They have no friends other than themselves. And they're filmmakers. And what they do is they, they shoot recreations of classic Hollywood movies, which that drew me in. I'm like, that is awesome. Let's go make our own version of this classic. So they'll do the Godfather. They'll do whatever. And I thought this is just brilliant. These two filmmakers who are recreating classic movies. Um, but the premise is mom gets a little worried about Greg. It's like, you got to get out there. You got to get some friends. So she introduces him to Rachel who is dying from leukemia. And she starts hanging out with them and she's she loves what they do and she starts helping with the creative process of their filming and everything but she is progressively throughout the movie getting worse the problem is is that greg now has a friend and he's developed a relationship with her which comes at odds with earl because now he wants to hang out with rachel and earl is kind of getting the shaft which when you only have one friend and that one friend doesn't want to hang with you kind of causes an issue um but he he it's very weird because it is a, a it's a platonic relationship. Interesting. <laughs> it's a platonic relationship between Greg and Rachel, but then also maybe more. Which is how they do that, it's very interesting. But he basically has to watch this now person that he has become very fond of and now a friend and who's kind of getting him out of his comfort zone in his shell die. And then how does he have to deal with that strife in life? Um it's a stark look again at mental health. What the anxiety that keeps them from having any friends, the social awkwardness. Now, okay, now we're developing a relationship, so we're learning how to have relationships. How does that affect outside relationships? All these different things that play into this movie. Um, and I'll end it on this. It's got to have one of the most creative filmmaking shots I have ever seen in my life. It's an a uh, continuous one shot where they are walking and they are going upstairs into the apartment or, or whatever room they're in and as they're walking the camera it, it goes upside down the whole thing shifts upside down for wh- whatever reason and it's kind of like, it's one of the most interesting shots i've ever seen on film i'm like i don't know maybe they did it with a jib and a crane and where the camera just t- i don't know how they pulled it off but it's a really interesting And I'm not even sure why it's in it. Like, what is the point? Why is this necessary? But it was so cool. You're like, you don't even care. It's like, okay, that's cool. Was it necessary? I don't know. But it was cool. So, you know, from a filmmaking standpoint, it was pretty badass. So, anyway, if you guys ever check this film out, I guarantee you will love it as much as I do. Me and Earl and the Dying Girl. And by the way, Olivia Cook in that. I mean, if you think she's good on House of the Dragon, I mean, or thought she was good on Bates Hotel or anything you... Freaking phenomenal in this film as the leukemia patient. She is just unreal. Uh, I and this is another one I wish more people would talk about. You know, it was based on a book. I don't think enough people know that it's based on a book. But um, this is one that people don't talk nearly enough about. That I think should they should see it. You should just see it. Agreed, man. Agreed. Gotta love the indie genre. That's for sure. Gotta love the <laughs> and mental genre. health. Where did that come from? All of these films were basically like stark looks at mental health. Like, I mean, you know, you know, once you talk about it, you give it less power, and that's freeing. So yes, it's all good. I love so that. Good. 
But hey, guys, be sure to let us know what your favorite indie film is. Comment below or reach out to us on Twitter, Instagram, any of the good places. We love the fan interaction, so we are here for it. That is for sure.